Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Tyrell Channing, I'm the technical manager for Moderna OneSolve, and today we're going to be going over um, IP security with Autodesk Vault and how Vault can fit into your IP security strategy. So just to go over the agenda real quick, and um, we'll discuss what is IP, the importance of protecting IP, some of the, the uh, common IP risk areas, and um, how Vault can then address some of those and form part of that strategy. So let's start off with what is intellectual property. So intellectual property is a term that describes the application of minds to develop something new or original. IP can exist in various forms, a new invention, brand, design, or artistic creation. It could be a manufacturing process or perhaps a trade secret, like KFC secret formula. You could think of it as an intangible proprietary information. Companies in the engineering industry must clearly define their intellectual property and protect their processes, designs, ideas, and inventions. Intellectual property protects the competitive advantage of the company, its reputation, and in most cases, its market share. As the world increases manufacturing capacities globally, it requires companies to have more research and more development, more innovation. Intellectual property rights protect the work and innovation of companies. An intellectual property protection strategy should include protection and access control of critical engineering data from concept to completion. Protection of engineering data other than property rights can be achieved with the product data management system. Intellectual property and design data needs to be secure to prevent the loss of valuable designs and or information. Companies who do not have control of their IP can experience loss of important design data and spend a lot of money for the recreation of that data. What was the value of what was lost? Did you identify the cause of that loss? Taking steps to prevent future data loss can save your company the expense of having to recover that data. Some of the most common reasons for data loss are listed here. Decentralized environment, data being overwritten, backups being lost. Engineers waste a considerable amount of their time managing data. This includes searching the different repositories, which have limited search capabilities. Too often, the data that engineers are looking for is spread across local drives, individual workstations, shared folders in the server somewhere. And not knowing which file is the latest version or if the assembly is complete can waste an engineer's time throughout the day. Not being able to find what they're looking for can cause the engineer to redesign what is needed unnecessarily. So alongside securing your intellectual property, improving individual productivity is one of the fundamental benefits of the PEM system. Engineering processes can have workflow challenges for both engineering and non-engineering staff. It can be difficult for the non-engineering staff to participate efficiently in the review and approval process when it's not managed by a PEM system. For design reviews especially, getting guidance from multiple points of view can be extremely valuable, but often is not done because it's too challenging to provide the necessary data and collect their feedback. A bit of materials are managed manually in spreadsheets. It's disconnected from the design data, which can make it questionable at the best of times. So this brings us to Vault and how Vault security mitigates the risk we spoke of earlier. Before we get into that, let's first have a look at what Vault is. So Autodesk Vault is a product data management system. It sits behind your firewall so on-prem with lifecycle revision, change management, security, and collaboration tools that allow you to control and share only the data you want while creating an auditable trail. The two areas of Vault can be categorized as server-side and client-side. The server consists of the following components, the Autodesk Data Management Console, often referred to the, or often referred to as the ADMS. The ADMS is used to maintain the databases and the file source. We have the IIS component. IIS forms part of the communication system, authenticates the user, and handles connection to the file store. Microsoft SQL Server is used as the database engine and is responsible for lists, which include things like users, permissions, and corresponding file store locations and index information. The file store itself is the physical location of those stored files. 
moving across to um, the client environment, access to an interaction with the data is handled through the Vault client and or application plugins. Tasks that can be performed by the user is determined by the security that has been implemented within the system. Vault does support integration with Active Directory. So domain user accounts can be imported to the Vault server. And this allows accounts to be created with Active Directory information. Um, for the purpose of this webinar though, we're not really gonna be covering Windows authentication. Okay, so now that we've gone through a brief overview of what Vault is or how Vault is assembled, let's go into Vault security. We're gonna have a closer look at um, how access and security works, followed by a quick mention on engineering change orders and some of the collaboration tools that we have on offer. So when it comes to Vault security, we typically separate them into four types. We have what's called ACLs or access control lists, role, object, and state-based security. The first one we're gonna look at today is role-based security. So what are roles within Vault? So when Vault are installed, there's a set of roles that you can assign to your users or groups. A role is a, a title or a collection that contains a set of permissions that allows your users or groups to perform certain tasks in the Vault, such as checking files out for editing, updating properties, or perhaps changing the state of a file. A user or a group can have multiple roles assigned to them. When more than one role is assigned, the permission from the roles are appended to that user or group, creating somewhat of a superset of permissions. For example, document consumer and document editor, both these roles are assigned. The user will now be able to read and modify files within the vault. Custom roles are supported in the later versions of vault. Going on to um, object-based security. So object-based security is applied to a particular object. Uh, for example, this could be a file or perhaps a custom object. Um, it includes read, modify, and delete. There's also an option to download. That option is not demonstrated over here. But... Folder-based security has the same as object-based security, read, modify, and delete. However, within the folder permissions, um, those are applied to the subfolder and or files unless the permissions have been set on the contents of those folders separately. When working with roles and object-based security, the most restrictive rule applies. The folder security will not grant an elevated privilege above the role that the user or group was given. For example, if a document consumer, which is a read-only role, is given modified permission on a folder based on folder security, they will not be able to modify the folder because the role does not allow it. It is possible to use the override security option for files within the vault, but that's something that should only be used where absolutely necessary and is controlled by the administrators. Moving into state-based security, and this is really around life cycles. So I just want to go over life cycles real quick. Life cycle definition is an engine that can be configured to automatically assign security behaviors and properties to a vault object. Um, throughout that design process. A lifecycle definition uses states to identify the object status within the lifecycle. Examples of states would be things like a work in progress or review or released. An object moves from one state to another based on the lifecycle definition's transition rules. So when we're talking about state-based security, what we're saying is that state-based security is a permission assigned to the lifecycle state of an object. Each state can have different permissions. These can be combined with object-based security or override object-based security, depending on whether or not state-based security is enabled. Also with life cycles is the ability to restrict or grant who may move an object from one state to another. For example, if something is in review and it needs to be moved to released, we can control that behavior or those permissions. Once again, ensuring that the right person releases the right data at the right time. So having spoken about some of these 
security types or systems with involved. When we combine the security, this is where we look at role, object, and state-based security working together. We refer to this as gated security. The first gate would be the role. Does the role allow the user or group to modify the object? If yes, we move to the second gate, the object-based security gate. Does the object-based security gate of the object, I'm looking at, allow the user to modify the object? If yes, then you move across to the third gate, which is the state-based security. Does the state allow the user to modify the object or that file? If all three gates can be passed, then the file can be modified in this example. Okay, so we've spoken a bit about the security around Vault. Let's move into change orders. So change orders are a component of the change management process that describes why, how, and when changes are made to a design. Just a side note, change orders are only available in Vault Professional. So change order states help track the progression of change order uh, through the change management process. The states of the change order can determine which users can affect the change order based on the user's role. Change orders use a routing list to control which users are notified when change enters a certain state. Vault also helps you collaborate with external stakeholders beyond your firewall. For example, it can be a challenge if you're going back and forth with a customer or a supplier using things like FTP file transfers, perhaps email, maybe Dropbox. Those tools are not cat aware and information can be lost or miscommunicated. There's a lot of room for error and lost time due to file size issues or the number of documents and disconnected information sitting in different places. In line with the security we spoke about earlier and utilizing Vault's collaboration tools, we can control what is shared with who and when. We can share a visual representation without sharing the actual design files, get feedback quickly and easily using a viewer. We can deliver files and designs to customers and suppliers using Autodesk Triumph. We can collaborate on designs and automatically exchange select data with external collaborators in Fusion Teams or BIM360. So in closing, I hope that you've been intrigued and seen how PDM systems such as Vault can form part of your IP protection strategy. We'll be moving into a short Q&A session. Thanks again for taking the time out to attend today. Um, I am going to ask if you can please make use of the um, chat box um, to populate those with uh, any questions you might have. Thank you.